hello my name is Emma and today I am going to some iconic New York City locations from some of my favorite books I took off work today because I needed to use some PTO and I also realized I just like haven't taken days off just to have like a personal day to myself and I decided that I really wanted to use one of my off days to film a video for you guys I'm gonna run to Starbucks and catch my train and I'll fill you guys in a little bit more on today's plan as I am traveling into the city Alright folks, prepare for a sweaty Emma Books vlog because it is like 85 to 95 degrees out today and it really was not the best choice to traverse around New York City today, but we're sticking it out. So I have made it to my first location, but before I tell you exactly where I am and what book this is for, I want to talk a little bit about just like the plan for this video. So I made a similar video to this that is very City of Bones specific. So if you are a Shadowhunter fan, you should definitely go watch my video, which is like the unofficial City of Bones tour where I go for like 12 different locations all across Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens. It's a really fun video, so you should definitely check it out. <sighs> God, sweat is getting in my eyes today is gonna be miserable <laughs> but for today's video I really wanted to do something that showed a lot of different books from New York City so I've chosen five different books and five different locations all throughout Manhattan and I'm just gonna be visiting them today so my goals for today number one include just finishing this vlog because I have filmed like at least five vlogs in 2022 and I just stopped filming and never finished them so just finishing this vlog would be like the biggest one of all second goal is obviously to visit all five locations I am I'm on a bit of a time limit today again really not the best day for me to do this video but I'm gonna do my best it is a lot of transit like I'm going to be on subways and buses and walking way more than I'm actually going to be at any of these locations all right lastly before I start exploring our first location I want to tell you about the books that I am going to be visiting different scenes from so first we have City of Bones by Cassandra Clare because of course how could I go to New York City and not visit some locations from my favorite series ever we also have A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara which is my most recent read out of all of these books. We have They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray. I was looking for something in the diviners because I'm a like first book of a series girl through and through, but I couldn't find many specific ones, but I really like what I chose for Lair of Dreams. And the last one is The Afterlife of Holly Chase, which is a really different vibe uh, comparing a Christmas story to a sweltering day, but I think it'll be cool uh, to visit these locations. So my first location today is Pier 63 at Chelsea Piers in Hudson River Park, and this is where a scene in They Both Die at the End takes place. In the book, they don't specify exactly which pier they go to, but there is a scene where Rufus and Mateo are talking about just what the meaning of their end day is, and Rufus is sharing a little bit about his family with Mateo for the first time. Hudson River Park was built in the 1990s, and it stretches all the way from Battery Park to 59th Street. Pier 62, 63, and 64 are connected, and they make up one of the largest continuous green spaces in New York City. In addition to the really gorgeous views of the Hudson River you can see at these piers, they also have a skate park, a carousel, and a really large lawn space. And they both die at the end. They don't specify exactly which pier they go to. They do say it is by Chelsea, and I feel like this pier looks the most similar to what's described in the book. They describe it as a concrete pier with steel railing, and Mateo makes a comment about how it's interesting that there's no boats on a pier. So I feel like Pier 63 is a really solid space that is where this conversation in TV date could have taken place. So I went to Pier 62 and 63 because they're very close together and this is definitely the area that I feel like this conversation and moment in Mateo and Rufus's end day would happen. I feel like I don't, oh my god, fucking helicopters. I feel like I don't hear a lot of New Yorkers coming here very frequently. Maybe it's just because it's like a Wednesday morning, but it's very empty and quiet. Oh my god, I was absolutely dripping sweat in that last clip. So it is time for one of my essentials. Oh, very necessary for today. Very, very necessary for today. Alrighty, let's hit the next stop. So 
I have made it to my second stop of the day. I decided to Uber from Chelsea Piers just because it was like one of the most funky routes to get to. And I really just wanted some time to like sit in the AC, drink some water, relax. But I made it. I have made it to 56 Lispinard Street, which is Willem and Jude's apartment in A Little Life. So there you can see number 56. And as you go up, there are some plants there. I was originally thinking that it might be like abandoned, but I think people do live in here. So Willem and Jude's apartment is apartment 5C at 56 Lispinard Street. So this building was completed in 1866. So it's a really old building, like much of the other buildings on this street. The address in the book is 56 Lispinard Street, but in a Tumblr post from the author, she had said that the building is inspired by 57 Lispinard Street, which is the old pearl paint building. Because of this switch, number 56 is actually only four floors high and number 57 is five floors high. So Willem and Jude's apartment would be that top railing on the top floor and that's how they got locked out on the roof that one time. I couldn't find many descriptions of the buildings outside in the book other than that it is a red brick building on a litter scattered street which seems to be true for real life as well. So Lisbonard Street is clearly one of the shortest stops of the day because I'm obviously not going to go inside. I don't think I could if I wanted to. There's like nothing really special about this street or these apartments from the outside except for the fact that this takes place in a little life and I will say that this very very much feels like an area that Willem and Jude would have lived in when they were first moving in together. Like it gives a vibe. It gives the vibes. It's actually so much cooler down here for some reason. I think maybe some clouds are coming in, but the big like secret unveiling I haven't shared in this video is that I have not finished A Little Life yet. Long story short, I started it in like March or February. I was reading it all the time, loving it so much. I'm filming a reading vlog that will be posted eventually so you'll get to see all of it starting in like April I got super busy I had so many plans I didn't want to bring this heavy book everywhere to read and I just paused on reading it for a really long time but I only have like 30 pages left maybe <laughs> so because it's pretty cool down here right now it's like not busy there's like steps that I'm sitting on I think that I'm gonna take this opportunity to just finish the book. It's only 30 pages, which I could read really quickly. I do already know what happens, which is annoying, but maybe this is like the reason for this three month reading break all along was so that I could finish it under Lisbonard Street, which is where the beginning and end of A Little Life take place. So let's do that. a little life under 56 Lismanard Street and this was definitely the absolute perfect way to finish this book. I will give more of my all-around thoughts on this book in that a little life vlog whenever it comes but now we are on to our next stop. today because I'm sweating or am I just reflecting off of this red table so we made it to location number three but there are a couple of L's I have had to take for this location so we are at Nomwa tea parlor and I strongly believe this is the inspiration for Ling Chan's family tea house in Lair of Dreams in the book they don't ever specify the name of the tea house but Nomwa Tea House has been here since the 1920s. It is on Doyer Street where the tea house in the book is. So my assumption is that like 
either this is meant to be the place or this was absolutely the inspiration. So L number one for today is that no more tea parlor is not open on Wednesdays. I found this out last night as I was doing like my final last checks of my roots for the day. I'm very disappointed I can't eat here today. Number one, because I love the dim sum here. It is amazing. There is no wonder why it is so popular and like so historic in New York City. But I also just wanted to show you the inside because I thought it would be cute and I haven't actually been here in a really long time. L number two of the day is that I did not bring my copy of Layer of Dreams. I brought my copy of The Diviners, <laughs> which doesn't make any sense because this tea house is not in The Diviners at all. It is Layer of Dreams. So it doesn't really make sense for the video. Maybe for like Instagram, I'll like edit in the cover of Layer of Dreams and only you guys will know. So this will be a quicker stop than this Menard Street because I'm not gonna sit here reading, but I'm just gonna walk around, show you Doyer Street, how nice it is, and then I gotta find food. Noma Tea Parlor opened in 1920 and it is the oldest continuously running Chinese restaurant in New York City. In the book, it is described as a tea house with an upper balcony on a curved street called Doyer Street, which is where we are. Other book descriptions are it has a neon sign that blinks the tea house, it is next to a jeweler shop, and it is also next to an opera house that actually existed on Doyer Street. In the book, Ling's uncle ran it, but it was the very first Chinese language theater in all of New York City. And an interesting fact about Nam Wati Parlor is that the original owners from 1920 are unknown, so I like to think that it really is Ling's parents. And yes, Nam Wati Parlor is open every day except for Wednesday when I was here, so I could not show you the interior, but it very much looks like the early interior as everything's probably the same as it was from 1920s and a lot of times the restaurant staff will come around pushing dim sum in the carts that you just pick off what you want and it's a very cool experience. I highly recommend going. But if you're like me and do want some Noa Tea Parlor on a Wednesday, you can actually go to their more casual location in Nolita on Kenmare Street. I went there and it's basically a lot of the classics from Noma Tea Parlor, definitely the same recipes and just as delicious, but it's a little bit more of a modern take on things. They played really good music, like a lot of pop when I was there and the food was just absolutely delicious. to stop number four, which is the New York Public Library. There's a couple of locations and I'm on the one at 42nd Street today because in the afterlife of Holly Chase, Holly and Ethan go to the Lions. So that I think is the Lion that they went to. But I sat over here first because I'm tired. So I'm taking a moment to rest and then I will go over and get content. So we are at the Stephen A. Schwarzman building at the New York Public Library to visit the two lions whose names are actually Patience and Fortitude. The lions were unveiled in 1911 along with the library's dedication. So the day that it opened, the lions were there. The commission for these statues were originally obtained by Edward Clark Potter, but they ended up being carved by the Piccarilli brothers who did a lot of stone carvings in New York City. And in 1911, they were paid $5,000 for these lions, which would be about $150,000 today. The lions are actually both males, and they were named Patience and Fortitude in 1930 by the mayor to represent the qualities needed by New Yorkers to survive the Great Depression. And in the afterlife of Holly Chase, Holly texts Ethan to meet her at Fortitude, which is the left lion, after they meet for the very first time. So this is where they sort of get to know each other. They play a little bit of truth or dare, and it's like a really great scene. And Holly also mentions that she doesn't like patience, which is the right lion, but doesn't ever really explain why. So I'd be interested to know.
Alright folks, so while I walk to my final location of the day, let me update you on a little bit of what's been going on and especially all of the additional L's I've taken today. So outside the New York Public Library was excruciating. Oh my gosh, it was so hot, there was no shade. I went inside for a couple of minutes and was like, I don't want to walk anywhere to sit, <laughs> so I just pulled off, went outside, left very quickly. My hair's gonna split in the wind, it might as well do it where it's supposed to. Then I decided to take an Uber to the Roosevelt Island tramway. I was initially going to take the subway, but I was like, no way, can't do any walking, need a break. And oh my God, am I glad I did, because I actually got cold in the Uber. It feels like 12 years since I have been cold. Naturally, I'm a dripping sweaty mess again, so that was nice while it lasted. Also, I lost my Metro card, which especially sucks because I put $20 on it this morning and I've taken the subway once today. So my last stop of today is on Roosevelt Island and my favorite thing about Roosevelt Island, other than it being so quiet, lovely, and peaceful, is that you can take the tramway there. So the tram is like a cable car that runs through the air alongside the Queensboro Bridge and so you get these really beautiful views of New York City. You're going over the water, it's gorgeous. So I get there and I gotta buy a new Metro card, which is disappointing enough, but all in the day's work. But then one of the sides of the tram isn't running, so only one car goes back and forth and it takes like 15 minutes to get to each side. And then what I think is the most disappointing L of all, because the entire reason I took the tram was to enjoy it myself, but also to show you how beautiful it is, because I don't think enough people in New York City take it out here. I stood on the wrong fucking side of the train car. There's one side that has this gorgeous view of the river, and the other side is very much like blocked by the Queensboro Bridge. It's still nice, but nowhere near the other side. Oh wait, and I forgot the biggest L of all. It's actually like a two-parter. So uh, this morning I realized I forgot to put sunscreen on. I'm out in the sun all fucking day, no sunscreen. So I probably have a sunburn, but then I remember I have like this really, really tiny tube of sunscreen in my purse. So I put it on my face and my arms. I discover a couple of minutes later that suddenly I'm yellow. I don't know how well you can see it right now in this lighting, but I got a lot of it off, but everywhere I put the sunscreen, there was yellow, like a highlighter. I see it so clearly in real life, and I look jaundiced. So clearly that sunscreen is expired, and I need to get more, and I should just put sunscreen on before spending all day outside. <laughs> I typically do, I just like forgot today, I was rushing. So yeah, it may be sweltering today, but it is raining L's all over me. We are super close to our last stop. I'm super excited to show it to you because it's one of my favorite locations in all of New York City. So I hope you're excited. We have made it to our final location. This is the Smallpox Memorial Hospital, which is in City of Bones. In City of Bones, they refer to it as Renwick's. I went here for the City of Bones unofficial tour that I mentioned earlier, and I love this place. I think it is so freaking cool. I just think these building ruins are so stunning. I'm incredibly impressed with how long they have stayed up and now they have all this gorgeous greenery growing on it. It's like a really, really lovely place to come and see. So this is the Renwick Smallpox Hospital, which opened in 1856, and it was named after the building's architect, James Renwick Jr. When the hospital opened, Roosevelt Island was previously known as Blackwell's Island, which if you're a Shadowhunters fan, you would know is a Shadowhunter family name. In the 1800s, the hospital was placed on this island just off of Manhattan in an effort to quarantine these smallpox patients as they were rolling out vaccines. And in the 1900s, it became a nursing training school after the 100-bed hospital closed. Around the 1950s, the building began falling apart and it became a New York landmark in 1972. So if you'll remember from City of Bones, Renwick's is the only other location in New York City that has a portal and it is where Valentine and his henchmen use as a hideout and where the major last battle of the book takes place along with some big reveals about Clary and Jace. And so I think it is so cool to just imagine all of that happening right here to see that in real life. All right, folks. Well, today has been really fun. I am super glad that I went to some new NYC book locations. Some places I've been before, some places I didn't even know were a book location. Would you believe it cooled off? 
and there are now clouds seconds after I leave Renwick's. Isn't that funny? Just how fucking hysterical is that? I am tired. I am hot. I am so sweaty. It looks like I just jumped in the East River. So I think it is time to bring today to a close. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I am so glad that I got to make this today. And let me know in the future if you would like more. Like what are some other New York City book locations that you know of that you would like me to go visit? Because I will definitely do so. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon for a new one. Bye.